Okay, what's the 80-20 approach, fastest way to get really good at copywriting? This is really cool, thanks for doing this. No problem, you're welcome, and I actually enjoy doing this. Um, the problem with the question itself is the fact that um, you can't become really good really fast. The more time you put in, the better you will become. Great copywriters didn't just become great copywriters because they picked it up and started studying it this summer. You're talking about going up against people who have a great knowledge of sales and you know gift of gab and all of that other kind of stuff. There's a, there's a lot that can go into becoming a good copywriter, including understanding psychology, empathy, etc. So the I can only answer the question on two ends of the um, uh, spectrum. How can I write some pretty good copy very fast, or how do I learn to become a really great copywriter? So I'll answer both of them. How do I write really cop good copy really fast? There's a lot of cool techniques, and I mentioned one um, in a course in an, in an other video just that I just recorded a few moments ago, which is on this page. You can go ahead and watch that first video and get the answer for that. But uh, so I'm going to give you a different one now um, to provide you more value. Okay, and this is um, a great technique that I actually learned from Jay Abraham. I don't know that he's the one who pioneered it, but at least he's the one who taught me, so I'm going to give him credit for that. And the, um, let's take, for example, let's suppose that you're throwing, uh, you're selling one of those sticks where you stick a tennis ball in it and you chuck it and your dog goes and you chucks it further and your dog goes and runs it and brings it back. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen these in the parks or somewhere. And so what you would do um, to utilize this technique is you'd go to Amazon and you'd look up those tennis ball chuckers. And then what you would do is start um, sorting out the reviews by the ones that are raving re the reviews and the ones that are just panning the product and you know, talking about how horrible it is. Now, one thing that is true is people shill all the time. The competition will come in and literally write horrible things about your business just to try and make themselves look better on that page. The people who, and they will, and the business owners themselves will shill and write positive reviews and post them as though that they were customers and so forth and have their friends do it. So you can't trust all of the reviews, but if you start reading a bunch of them, you will in totality get a real, um, uh, a good idea of what the real response and feedback is that is positive and negative. So let's take the, the positive, we'll say, a bunch, you'll pick up a whole bunch of stuff that will say, you know, this product is great because, you know, when I come home from work, my shoulder's often too tired to throw the ball, but, I, you know, I feel sorry because my dog needs more exercise, and this really helps get that done. I can exercise quicker and, you know, get in the, um, it, you know, and get the dog can get more in a shorter amount of time. You know, now I can use, you know, now I can casually talk on the cell phone while I'm doing this because it's not as, in, you know, as involved, or whatever the, the things that they're saying are good are. And that becomes the benefits that you can actually put in your copy. You say, you know, get this, be it's great. And then you start listing these things, you know. And when it comes, you start looking at the negative. And the negatives will be things like, you know, this one was cheap and it broke. Um, it's green, so when you drop it in the grass, it's actually wasn't that easy, you know, to spot again or whatever the, the negatives are. And you turn those negatives into positives. And it's very important that you make sure everything you say is true. And the best, th great copywriters will write the ultimate. You know, they'll write the best thing that they could possibly. And then they will do all they can to make sure that the product matches their promises. And then they will back down the copy down to match the reality for, you know, to however great they could make the product. So what you would do here is you would make sure that, you know, hey, if is this product being made in this process that makes these cheap ones like these other ones? Because if not, I want to be able to say that this isn't cheap and doesn't break like those other ones. So you still have to make sure everything is true. Don't just lie. But the point is you would then take those negatives and say, and don't worry, this isn't like those other products. And you explain how it is exact opposite of that. You say this one is high quality, so it won't break on you in less than a week. Plus, it's a nice day glow orange so that you never worry about losing it. You can always find it. It's got this hook that lets you to hang it on your, in, your, um, in your closet door or on the door handle so that it's easy access for you to take to the park and stuff. So that is a great technique for writing some pretty good copy really quickly. Okay, that being done, let's talk about how to become a really good copywriter. 
Becoming a really good copywriter is not something that's fast. As I said, you put in time and a lot of energy. People you know, like to complain that this copywriter is getting all this money, he only spent two hours working. That's an inaccurate statement. It's like a doctor. A doctor, you know, you're not paying a doctor because he spent five minutes, came in and took some scissors and snipped off something, you know, a mole. What you're, what you're paying for is his expertise to know whether or not you should go get that checked because it could be cancerous and making sure that he knows how to make that cut so that you don't end up with a big scar and so forth. So you, you're not paying for that five minutes of his time. You're paying for all of the time and education he spent to become that expert. And copywriters work in the, with copywriting, it's the same way. So how do you get on the path to becoming a good copywriter? Well, this is the first site I'm going to drive you to. It's my father's. You probably know it if you know me. It's the GaryHalbertLetter.com. And what you want to do is definitely get on our announcement list and click this down here um, because we put out content and we put out uh, special stuff that we don't put on the site that you can only get when you're on that list. But the site, you don't need to sign up. The site is completely free. You can come over here and click on View the Newsletter Archive and then here are all the different letters that my father wrote and we have people who are contributing now to it as well. But you want to scroll down here and you want to start looking for the Boron Letters. Okay. And another, by the way, another great benefit of this, is, of signing up, is when you sign up, you'll actually get the letters in the order in which they were written, and they're very good for the same thing I'm about to explain. But you start off with born letter number one, and these are a series of letters that my father wrote to me when I was about 15 years old, teaching me the business. And if you uh, go through the letters, he's going to give you some direct uh, advice on you know how to become a great copywriter. And I'll tell you, I'm going to get you started right away. He's going to recommend a book, and it's a fantastic book. It's called Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins. If you haven't read it, get it. It's actually free because it's in public domain. So it's you like the Boron letters and the Gary Halbert letter. It's not going to cost you a dime. Okay. He's also going to recommend the Robert Collier letter book. And I recommend you get that from the Robert Collier family. And um, the book, the other thing, he's going to recommend some other things. But what I want to say about this, the difference between becoming good and great will become a matter of effort. Good copy doesn't come just from great inspiration. It's actually hard work. You do a lot of edits, you put yourself, you know, you go back and review your material to make sure that you've added everything and didn't forget something and there's, you know, there's a lot that goes into it in beforehand uh, in doing your research, doing the copy dump and then editing. The actual writing process is the shortest part of the whole thing. It's the shortest part of the entire phase. But my dad is going to recommend some things that some people like to skip, and I want to warn you against skipping them. Um, I've seen him teach many people to be copywriters, and many of the people he taught have become the world's best copywriters right now. And they, they rank right up there amongst all of the, the best living copywriters there are. And everyone who did actually followed the advice, no matter how you know, tedious or banal that advice seemed at first, because it's not. And I'll give, you an ex um, I'll give you an example of this, and this is the one that I want to point you to. One of the things he's going to have you do is he's going to tell you about some great ads. And he's going to tell you to take those ads and rewrite them out in your own hand. Take your, you know, sit down with a piece of paper and just copy them. And all the best copywriters um, that he taught actually did this. And there were a lot of people who, you know, they say, hey, I studied under Gary Halbert. And they actually suck. They're not very good copywriters. They did study under him for you know a week or two or whatever, and not everybody who did was people that my father would recommend because people put different amounts of effort into stuff. Just like you know, just because somebody's a student doesn't mean that they're good. But the A plus students, the best ones, all ended up finishing this, and this is how it works and why it works so well. My father once taught me when I was young that you recreate outside what you carry around inside, and what that means is if you're uh, desk is messy and disorganized and it's usually because your head is also messy and disorganized and what a lot of people are picking up on nowadays is that it works in the opposite so in other words if you change your outside environment you organize it you will end up changing your internal environment you will actually end up organizing your thought patterns and your thought processes and people have found that you know if you go and organize your closet you'll end up you know when you're done you will have an organized systematic you know know what you're going to do with the rest of the week and get, be become more productive and this 
it, you know, works on all kinds of levels and with all kinds of aspects. And one of these is actually the part about writing out. Your when you start copywriting or hand copying great advertising, your brain actually becomes very familiar and used to and understanding what it's like to write great copy. So it will be a lot easier when you take all of the principles and everything else you're going to learn through the rest of the things that he suggests when you do that, um, after, you, after you've done it, your brain actually picks up on the idea. And so when you, you know, later on, after you've done this a while, when you sit there and write about something, you won't use weak qualifying words as much. You will, you will instead of saying, this is pretty good, you will say, this is amazing. Okay. And that is a really uh, great process. Now, there's a brand new advent on this that we created accidentally. Uh, my brother and I, this is halvertising.com, uh, and we started taking some of our father's best ads and we started breaking them down and explaining to you uh, why he used this word and why he's saying this phrase and why he's positioning this now and what he's thinking as he's doing it. This is really like being inside Garrett Halbert's brain as he writes. But uh, somebody who bought one of these uh, breakdowns actually came up with the brilliant idea, which I love, and he rewrites these ads as we are talking about it because he's not only knowing what it's like and feeling um, to write these good ads, he's actually getting a complete understanding of why these are the words being chosen and so forth. So it's actually like taking our father's lesson and putting, you know, adding nitrous oxide or, uh, excuse me, um, you know, just adding, um, you know, fuel to the fire for it because it makes it so much more powerful to be able to do it this way. So later on, I would suggest, you know, in your career, doing, grabbing a few of these ad breakdowns. Uh, we've done three so far, and they're fantastic for that. And I wasn't, you know, you can tell from the other videos, this wasn't about pitching it. And this is, you know, something that you'll probably do a little bit later on in the, um, uh, in the course of your learning process. But, uh, and by the way, you want to be on the list for the, um, uh, the Gary Halbert letter because, and for Halbertizing because, if when we come out with a new uh, uh, ad breakdown, we always offer at a price that you know um, that's much lower than what it's going to be after the introductory, because we do that to get it in people's hands, get feedback and testimonials and so forth, and also reward people for being fans and you know being long-term supporters. So, but you want to be on that list so that you can get them you know as soon as they come out, because then they're cheaper than getting them otherwise. Okay, um, so I think that answers that question. And but when you start reading the Boron letters and going through all of this stuff, and by the way, a lot of the stuff on the ad, you know, stuff that was added in blue, this is stuff that later on I wrote. And the reason I wrote it was kind of explain what I was thinking and kind of expand on the the lessons that my father taught in here because I not only know these lessons, I know the more advanced versions of these lessons as well. I always like to say I was. Um, you know, my father's first like full-time, you know, protege student. <laughs> so I've, I, you know, I've, I've been there for the majority of his uh, marketing career. He stopped, uh, he stopped working for a living and taking regular, uh, working at a regular job the day before I was born. But, you know, I was just a kid. I wasn't really focused in on how this business works until I was, you know, like 11 or 12. But I was there every step of the way as he taught people. So one thing I know even better is how he would teach people stuff. And so, you know, what I did was at the bottom of these is I would add some, I would add more to what he had said. Okay, um, well, I think that answers that question <laughs> in, a, in a long way, but I hope this uh, was helpful. And uh, go ahead and feel free to email me back any more questions if you need uh, a further explanation or details on anything.